Heavenly Father, we come this day to your word, your word which is truth and life. Lord, we pray that you open up the understanding of our minds and open our hearts to receive your word, for it truly is truth and life to those who find it. Lord, your word is quick. Lord, it's a divider of soul and spirit. It's a discerner of the intents of the heart. And Lord, we hunger and thirst for your word today. And we pray, Lord, that we would be not only hearers of the word, but doers of the word. So Lord, as we come to you and as we approach you, we pray once again for open hearts this day. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. For those of you that are watching by video, our name is Pastor Michael Staub, and this is Way of New Life Ministries, and you can find us at wayofnewlifeministries.org. And today we're going to be dealing with the Gospel of Matthew, the fifth chapter, beginning with verse 6. And it reads, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And I want to turn to John 7, 37. And that reads, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst." Let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his precious word. So today this message has to do with our spirit. Certainly we understand the natural side of hunger and thirst when we're hungry. When you leave today, you might go up to McDonald's and get a Happy Meal or something, okay? Or some nuggets. Or you might buy a Coke or a milkshake because you're thirsty. Or drink some water. And we feed our bodies um, many times, three times a day, and for some of us, more. We eat breakfast. Our bodies, bodies need this energy in order to function and a few hours go by and then we're eating lunch and then dinner and see when God created us he made certain things in the natural also to show us what's going on in the spiritual you're a trinity your mind body and spirit and there are certain things that are good for your body and we can see that all across the education uh, sources out there, there's nutri nutrition places that tell you what's really good for you, what's really bad for you, what's going to make you healthy, what certain foods are great for your certain parts of your body, certain, uh, you know, your blood, what's good for your blood, what's good for your organs, what's good for your mind. And see, God's word is no different. And our spirits, just like our bodies, need to be nourished. And many times we may neglect our spirits for many different reasons. And our spirits, our faith gets weak. And just like if you didn't feed your body for days, you're going to be lucky if you get up and can walk across the street without fainting because you have no energy. And see, when we hunger and thirst for things in our lives, our spirit, we have to ask ourselves, what are we feeding our spirits with? Because there's a lot of things out there that you can feed your spirit with. It may not be the word of God. There's an old saying that says, you are what you eat. 
So today, are we filled with anger? Are we filled with unrest, uncertainty? Or do we, are we filled with fear and doubt? Are we driven by lust, pornography, want? Like we're always desiring riches and fame and fortune. And many times we're going into these sources that are available to you because of course the enemy is going to be making all kind of things available to you to feed you garbage to eat you know recently when i was watching tv i was trying to watch a football game and i just i don't know i just couldn't take the commercials anymore and i and honestly i couldn't even take the announcers So I silenced the football game and just watched it visually. And I felt a peace to watch it. My brother, who I visited, even played some symphony music while he's watching the football game, rather than listen to all this stuff. And see, when we're talking about what we're receiving, our mind's the battleground, what we're seeing, hearing, touching, feeling, these things that are, we're making decisions in our mind as to what we're going to let get into our hearts. And if we let things like anger and fear and doubt get into our hearts, well, guess what? That's why we feel the way we feel at times where we don't feel so good or we get mad very easily. It, people can set us off in a moment. But this is where Jesus comes and says, blessed are you if you hunger and thirst after righteousness. Because there's another side that we should seek and look into in our lives in that righteousness, to seek righteousness, to seek righteousness himself, Jesus Christ. To let him fill you, not only with himself, but with the fruits of the spirit, of his spirit. That we can be filled with his word. He said that, we can read in another scripture in John 6, 54, 55, he said, to eat his body and to drink his blood. And many people got offended with that because they thought he was talking about it in the natural. But if you read that scripture, he said, what I'm saying to you is spirit. We read about how he rained manna down in the desert. And that manna was all that they needed to sustain them in the desert. Jesus said that heaven and earth may pass away, but my word will never pass away. It will not come back void. And see, sometimes in our lives, in our spirit, when we're feeling down, when we're feeling weak, when we're looking for direction, or we're feeling anger or something else coming on, we need to read his word or go into his word and find the bread of life. To find truth. If we're filling our hearts with lies and, and um, corruption, lawlessness and evil, well, guess how that's going to affect you? Guess how you're going to act? If that's the source of what is generating within here, if you have all this anger. And this is where Jesus takes us into his word and feeds us the word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. So if our faith is weak, we can go into the word and not only find faith, but we can find the remedy of what is ailing us what we're dealing with in our lives. If we're dealing with unbelief or unforgiveness can be 
an evil that's in our hearts that causes us much pain and suffering because we're carrying around all this unforgiveness and it's blocking us from all the good things that God would have for us. So that unforgiveness is, is churning. It's almost like it's fermenting. And there's a lot of ids and ads that come out of that fermentation. We want revenge. We want justice. We want payback. We start talking negative about that. All this negativity comes out of that unforgiveness. Where God teaches us and brings us into his word and, and says, if you want to be forgiven, then you must be willing to forgive. Peter says, how many times should I forgive him, Lord? Seven times? No, Peter, 70 times seven. That's 490 times. And I know he meant more. And knowing that that forgiveness frees you, frees you of that incident that happened that hurt you. And you're not carrying his baggage around in your heart. He asks us to tend our hearts. You know your heart's like a garden. And if you're holding on to unbelief, unforgiveness, bitterness, strife, envy, Jesus says it's not what goes in your mouth that defiles you. It's what comes out of it. And what comes out of it is what you ate, what you believe. And he draws us to himself and he says, come unto me all ye that thirst and I will give you living water. Now that is depicted with God's Holy Spirit. Did you ever receive that power from on high? Did you ever have that experience of God and the Holy Spirit filling you and that joy and that peace just welling up within you like a, like, like a well of flowing water, of, of purity, of goodness, the richness of God's Spirit filling you, immersing you in his love? and in his peace. And now you have love, now look at your heart. You don't have anger, and you don't have unbelief, and you don't have bitterness, because you got rid of it. And now what has taken place, because we received from him, we ate of his word, we went into our prayer life and received forgiveness, where we were washed clean, and we received grace, and we received that living waters, we received the peace, we received the joy. We received the long suffering. We received the power of God. And our life has changed. As we go through life, we go out with peace in our souls. We bring goodness into a conversation, we bring hope into situations. And most of all, we bring love as he's asked us to love one another. I can't love if my, lo if my heart's filled with hate, if that's what I'm eating. If I'm watching TV and I'm hearing all this hate that's on there, I don't care who you're listening to. If you're listening to whatever news channel, they're talking hate on this person. If you, talk, if you go to another news channel, they're talking hate on the other. They're gonna get you to hate one another. Look how people are hating one another just because of their political affiliations. Because of what they ate. Now, if they were reading God's word that says, that's my brother and that's my sister, I don't, whatever their political affiliation is, God asked me to love them. I don't have to love what they do. But certainly I'm not supposed to hate them or harm them. And see, the enemy is great about dividing and conquer. And he'll divide your house. He'll divide your businesses where you work. He'll divide you in your schools. He'll divide you in social life. Because he wants to destroy you. He wants to steal from you. And he wants to lie on you. And how many lies have we all bought? 
And how much truth have we bought? How much love have we bought that dispels fear? Perfect love casts out all fear. How much truth have we received that exposes the lie? And what are we basing our decisions on? And do we truly thirst and hunger for righteousness? Do I have a thirst for God? For, do, am I God conscious? Am I thirsting for him today? Am I thirsting for God? Am I tired of all the lies and all the corruption and all the lawlessness and all the, the, uh, the things that are out of order in this world? God is a God of order. He made it all good. And when things are in order, like a marriage, it's very fruitful. When things are out of order, things are very detrimental. They can get very evil or bad, depending on how out of order it is. And we have to ask ourselves, what do we seek in our lives? Are we truly seeking his righteousness? Do we really hunger for peace? You know, I would like to turn on the TV and I'd like to be seeing love and peace and joy and forgiveness, long-suffering, some forbearance, you know, people admitting to the truth. That would refresh my soul. Not this other stuff that, God, they think that we don't have a brain sometimes, the things that they say right to your face. And it's not just the TV. And here's what I'll end with. We are, God asks us to carry that righteousness. It's his righteousness, by the way. Our righteousness is filthy rags. But when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit that enriches us, that gives us that power to seek him, that drive, that propulsion to seek him out in his word, in our prayer life, in fellowship, all these places that God makes available to us to find him. He said, if we seek him, we'll find him. And he says, if you thirst for it, if that's what you truly want, if you're thirsting for and hungering for that goodness of God, if you're hungering and thirsting for an answer to a problem in your life in his word, he promises us that if we're seeking it, you will be filled. I can't tell you how many times I ran into a problem in my life and God led me to a scripture in the Bible that answered that call that brought hope into my heart, that allowed me to continue in my faith and eventually see the results of that word come into pass in my life. And I'll give you an example of that. When I was in business, we owed the IRS. Well, I'll say this, I was at a service and we were being prayed over. We were going up to be prayed over. And our bishop gave me a word. He said, Mike, he said, the Lord says you're going to go through a very difficult trial. But know that he's going to get you through it. Okay, that was a word of knowledge that he gave me. Okay. Well, two weeks later, we get a notice from the IRS that we owed all this money. And it make, I mean, this story is in my book that I wrote. If you want a, a copy of the book, there's copies here. Or if you can, you can order it on Amazon if you're watching by video. It's, it's a longer story, but I'm going to shorten it. We owed them a lot of money, and we ended up into a payment arrangement. 3000 a week, certified check, okay? And there was, and it was very difficult meeting that demand. And as this whole thing opened up, we were barely making it through with these payments. It was a struggle. We were going home with $200 a week to feed a family of four, okay? 
And as time went on, we, we just kept doing our best and God was making ways for us, but it was very, very difficult. And then one week, he said, if you don't make the payment every Friday, 3,000, we'll come and lock your business up. So it was a Thursday and I didn't have it. And out of the blue, this IRS agent calls me on the phone at my work. And I answered the phone, his name was Bart, and he says to me, Mike, I have one thing to say to you. I'm thinking, here we go. What is that, Bart? He said, keep the faith. And he hung up the phone. The very man that was threatening me to lock up our business, God used to give me a word that I was thirsting for, for hope. It's one, I only have one more day. I don't have the $3,000. I was hungering and thirsting. And sometimes we can really starve ourselves and it causes mental anguish and mental problems, depression and all this stuff. If we would just go to him and be fed. Friday came, I still didn't have it. And I was holding on to that word that the bishop gave me that he'll get me through. I didn't know how he was going to get me through. He's God. He's going to get me through. I don't know how, but he's going to. I called up Bart and I said, Bart, I don't have it. He said, that's all right. We let you miss one or two, which he didn't tell us in the beginning. Eventually, we paid him off, and when we did, I bought this little ring to remind me of what God did and the word that he gave me that came to pass. He loves all of us equally, and he'll do the same for you and your problems and your trials and tribulations. When you're hungering thirst for a heavenly father to, to call you into the kitchen table and say, come on, let's work this out through Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. Let's work out this problem. And how does that happen? If you're watching by video or maybe someone here, if you never ask the Lord Jesus, he's alive. God is alive and he wants to communicate with you. He wants to live in your heart. And you can receive him by just inviting him into your heart today and asking him to be Lord of your life and to forgive you your sins. So if you're watching by video, or if you're here and you wanna ask God into your life because maybe you don't feel him in your life right now. So Lord, we pray, we ask you to, Lord, we ask you to forgive us our sins. We ask you, Lord, to come into our hearts and be Lord of our lives. Lord, we're hungering and thirst after your righteousness, your peace, your love, your joy, your wisdom, your knowledge. We pray, Lord Jesus, to receive you in this moment. And Lord, we also pray for those who need the power of God, that baptism of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask you to fill them with your Holy Ghost today. Lord, your Holy Spirit, you said will teach us all things the comforter to comfort us god himself that third person of the trinity to fill our hearts and our souls to be with us knowing and trusting that jesus died on the cross for all of our sins and that he loves us and he sent that holy spirit to comfort us to be with us so Lord, today we pray. We pray to seek you. We pray our diet. Our diet would be circled around the things of God. We would seek your righteousness and your peace and your goodness, reading your word and seeking your word, praying and fasting and seeking that righteousness to be filled with it. And Lord, help us to discern and know when we're seeing garbage and when to turn that off or to, or to move away from it, that we don't fill our hearts with garbage. 
but with your righteousness. For we ask these things, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for coming.